Thank you so much. Actually, Chris Jones is going to be chairing the meeting this time. And so, you know, so he will be, uh, you know, he will be heading the meeting. Thank you for clarifying. Thanks. Go ahead, Chris. It's all yours. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Jones. I am um, the LEP member and um, uh, the new chair of the telehealth committee. So please bear with me as I uh, struggle through some of this. Um, so welcome. Oh, so we need to establish a quorum. Correct. Our, that's our first step. Excellent. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> Christina, would you mind establishing the quorum for us? Yes. Good morning. Christina Wong. Here. Chris Jones. Here. Susan Friedman. Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Behavioral Sciences Telehealth Committee meeting. Um, I am Chris Jones, Chair of the Telehealth Committee. Um, today is October 1st, 2021, and the time is 9.02 a.m. The meeting is occurring at various locations pursuant to Executive Order N2520, dated March 12th, 2020. Um, today's meeting will be conducted using the following guidelines. All participants will mute their microphones or phone during each presentation of the agenda topic. At the end of the speaker's presentation, the chair of the committee will ask for discussion from each board member. Board members will unmute their microphone or phone to comment. Um, upon conclusion of your comments, please uh, mute your microphones. Board members will, who wish to provide additional comments should uh, select the raised hand feature next to their name. Uh, this will alert the host and chair that you have uh, additional comments. At the conclusion of the discussion from the board members, the chair of the committee will ask for public comment. Um, members of the public um, should select the raise hand feature next to their uh, name to indicate that they have comments. And this will alert uh, the host and chair that you wish to speak. Please wait until you're recognized by the host or chair to unmute uh, your microphone or phone. Members of the public who are accessing the meeting through a phone will be asked for their comments following the comments by those attending uh, via the WebEx platform. Um, at the conclusion of the discussion period, the chair of the committee will call for the vote um, if necessary or move to the next agenda item. Um, all in attendance should keep their comments specific to the agenda item being discussed and then opportunity for public comment for items, items not on the agenda will be provided. Please be advised that during this comment period, the board cannot um, engage in discussions or take action on any matter that is raised except to decide whether to place the matter on the agenda uh, of the future meeting. Um, okay. So with that, can we do uh, introductions? Can we start off with that? Sounds good. All right. Um, I'll, I guess I'll start. Uh, like I said, my name is Chris Jones. I'm the LEP member and the uh, the the chair of the telehealth committee. I'm gonna. I'll go with who I see on my camera, Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Friedman. I'm a public member of the Board of Behavioral Sciences, and I'm in Los Angeles. Um, we do everyone. Christina Wong. Let me introduce myself also. <laughs> Christina Wong, LCSW member, and uh, I am my location. I'm in Chico, California. Is it, Christina, is it appropriate to have the staff in the um, Introduce themselves also. Yes, call mm -hmm. their names. All right. So then we've got uh, Christy Berger. Christy's having trouble with their audio today. So I'll just say good morning, Christy. All right. Um, Rosanna Helms. Yes. Hi, I'm Rosanna Helms. I am the legislative manager for the board. And Steve Sodergren. Hi, Steve Zodigran. I'm the executive officer for the board. Good morning. And then we have um, Sabina. Sabina Knight, legal counsel for the board. All right. I can't see everyone on my screen. Am I forgetting anyone? 
Christina Kitamura. Oh, sorry. Good morning, Christina Kitamura. I'm the administrative analyst for the board. That should be it. Got everyone? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so we'd like to make um, a change uh, to the agenda for today. We'd like to um, move item eight, um, public comment for items not on the agenda, and nine suggestions for future agenda items. Um, we're gonna we want to do that before uh, agenda item number three, the um, consent calendar. That's okay. Yes, Chris, I'll go ahead and take it from here. Um, I just wanted okay. to note as part of agenda item eight, we have a letter from camp that has been added to the meeting materials under that agenda item it's the letter is dated september 23 2021 and the, the subject of the letter is telesupervision and the telehealth discussion and, and camp does a nice job of summarizing um where they're at with the discussions that we're having um and so i i'll leave it in um to jen alley to to elaborate on that if she would like to as well this is the month Sorry. Okay, this is the moderator. I've just made Jennifer Alley a panelist and Jennifer, you should be able to unmute yourself and speak. There we go. I am un unmuted. <laughs> yes, perfect. Thank you. Well, um, good morning and thank you very much for um, allowing us to make comments prior to dive into the items on the agenda. Um, I am Jennifer Alley with the California Association of Marriage and Family Therapists, and CAMP represents uh, 33,000 licensed and pre-licensed providers in the state. Um, and so I, I, again, would like to thank BPS staff um, for the inclusion of our letter um, and the ability to make comments. We really, really do appreciate it. You know, and, and CAMP confer, confer, concurs, I could talk this morning, with the general codification of in, the increased allowance and use of telehealth supervision and support uh, 2022 legislation clarifying telesupervision. Um, you know, and as for telehealth, we, you know, we totally agree and understand and support the increased use of telehealth for associates and trainees, but we are not in a rush to establish licensure requirements based on the bizarre circumstances that everybody's been in in COVID. You know, we have a list of questions in the letter I'm just going to point to, you know, a few of them, you know, is there a minimum requirement for in person experience for people, um, you know, working on their hours towards licensure. Um, when and what telehealth training requirements will be required and, you know, where can associates work? Are we talking about in their office or in their home? You know, we are really just, you know, want to continue having a conversation to ensure that associates are getting to know their jobs and that consumers are protected. Um, and so. You know, that is why we'd really like to see the telehealth uh, committee continue its charge through 2022 or for a working group to be formed to further flush out these important and complicated issues with the goal of uh, 2023 legislation or if the process moves, you know, quicker than anticipated, possibly, you know, amendments to any legislation in 2022. Um, so thank you again to the, the board and the, the committee for allowing us to make comments on this critical issue and, and we look forward to continuing our collaboration. Thank you. Very much, Jennifer. Um, so now I believe that we'll move to uh, public comment for items that are not on the agenda. The moderator, will you help us with um, how to manage the, the Q and A? Certainly. So this is the moderator. I've opened up the Q and A feature of WebEx and we are sharing instructions on the screen. If you'd like to make a public comment on this agenda item, please click on the question mark icon, typically in the lower right corner of your WebEx screen. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can click the three dot other options to find the Q and A button and then type the word comment into the text box and hit send. We will take comments in the order received. Each comment will have a two minute time limit. And I do have three hand raises for public comment, but no 
nothing in the Q and A box. So uh, going in order, I see attendee identifying as Angelina Gutierrez, and I will request that she unmute. Thank you. You have two minutes. Hi, I um, I was just wondering if the committee would consider, or if there, I'm wondering, if there's been any discussions because I really don't know anything. Um, during COVID, like during 2020, especially like my hours as an associate decreased immensely. Um, I was not able to acquire as many hours as I was pre pandemic uh, doing face to face because many clients did not want to do telehealth. That being said, I'm hoping that the BBS will consider since this is a t that we've been doing telehealth for so long, possibly extending or offering extensions for the six year requirement for licensure of completing your hours within that time frame. Um, I had a pretty significant decrease, about 45% in my hours. Um, and that's all about control. And I'm not the only one, you know, among my colleagues. So I just wanted to put that out there and hope that um, it's being discussed or it could at least be brought up in the future at some time. But that's all. Comments. Uh, next is Jennifer, uh, speaker identifying as Jennifer Alley. I will send the request to unmute. Um, hello, I, I, I did not mean to have my hand up. It must have been from before when you made me a panelist. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was easy. Thank you. And I now have uh, someone identifying as Benjamin Caldwell. I will send a request to unmute. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, ben Caldwell, MFT, a couple of things that are primarily administrative really. First, I just wanted to say thanks to uh, Jen Alley from Camped. Um, that letter was, I think, very thoughtful and um, a, a good read on where we are. Um, the administrative things here, I, I noticed that there is an agenda item for um, accepting minutes from the September 9th meeting. Um, I did not see those minutes in the meeting materials that are posted online. Um, so members of the public haven't had a chance to review them. Um, and then the other issue, and I, I may have just missed it, and if I just missed it, please, by all means, point me in the, in the right direction. Um, and the other thing is uh, not necessarily directly related to the work of this committee, um, but a potential uh, future item agenda or just something for staff to address. Um, it does not seem as though over the past three weeks there's been much progress in terms of initial AMFT registrations. And so I'm starting to hear questions about what's what's happening with those and what the potential roadblock might be. Um, and again, that's not something necessarily to be addressed here, but just wanted to make sure it's on um, committee and staff's radar. Thank you very much. And this is the moderator. I do have a comment submitted in writing uh, from Kara Sanner with the Association of Social Work Boards. She says, I do not have a co I have comments or need to speak, just an announcement that I am participating. This is an emerging area of regulation, and I look forward to learning more about the committee's work. And I see no further requests for public comment. Shall I close the Q&A feature? Chris, it might, you might sorry, still be. Sorry, okay. sorry. yes, <laughs> please. Thank you. Close it. Um, okay, are there any uh, comments from our board members? Okay. Um, our next item would then be looking for suggestions for. My hand, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see sorry. you, Susan. <laughs> I didn't see it. I apologize. Go ahead. I used my hand on here because I somehow or other, for some reason today, I have very few things there and there's no place on here that says raise your hand. So anyway, I just wanted to ask one thing. Have we ever considered, um, doing a, a questionnaire, the same kind of thing that we did to, you know, for all the therapists that we license, at least to have those therapists send a questionnaire to their 
patients or clients, because um, it would be very interesting to know, for example, even if all of our licensees are up to date and have figured out how to use this new technology and find it convenient, it may be, and we don't know the answer, it may be that a lot of the patients or clients feel that it is not as worthwhile for them as it was before, even though it's very convenient and they don't have to find parking and they don't have to rush and get there, et cetera. So I'm just wondering, like maybe Roseanne probably knows if we've ever done anything like that. Well, I can, I can, I can speak to that. Um, we haven't done anything like that. Um, and actually this is not a, just to, because we're not really supposed to be discussing anything else on the agenda. And it's not really a comment period. I can say I can talk to you on the side, Susan, about that. Um, we've got a lot of stuff to tackle here as just in licensing as it is. Um, so I think that's why we focus on the kind of the licensing regulations right now. Um, on I see where you're what you're saying. So let me talk to you on the side about that, and I can give you some more information. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? okay. I thought this was the place for board members could ask questions. Okay. Well, it's uh, for comments uh, for items not on the agenda, so it's really just comments. So we, I've taken your comment that you know that's something you may want to look at. Then is is a is a um, a survey for actual um, clients of therapists out there. Um, so I will take that, and I can talk with you offline about that. Okay, thank that's you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And this is the moderator just to inform the chair. We also have a hand raised from an attendee identifying as Jordan Bowler. Did you want to push that to the next open comment period? Yes, let's do that. All right. Thank you. So, our next item is uh, suggestions for, um, for future uh, agenda items. Um, are there any uh, future agenda items uh, from our board members? And I can't see everybody, so I don't know if, if Susan or, or Christina have their hand up. No, I don't see any of the hands up, so. All right, excellent. Yeah. Um, then we'll take uh, public comments for future um, agenda items. Honor, if you'd like to open up the Q&A. And this is the moderator. We've opened up the Q&A feature. Uh, we're sharing instructions on the screen. If you would like to make a public comment, you would click on the question mark icon and then, or if you are on a mobile device, you can click the three dot other options icon to find the Q and A button and type the word comment into the field and hit send. Each commenter will have a two minute time limit and we'll take comments in the order received. And I no longer see the hand raised from the previous attendee. So I'll give people a moment to find the Q&A box. And Jordan, someone identifying as Jordan Bowler does have his hand up. I will, is her. I've sent a request for Jordan to unmute. Hello. Oh, uh, hello. Yes, Jordan, we can hear you. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I, I apologize. Um, I, I got into this meeting as, as soon as possible. Um, I, I just I realize um, we're past a, a few of these points and it, it's OK. I'll, I can just look at the meeting minutes, but I just wanted to see um, are we moving forward with um, getting rid of the waiver extension thing and just making telehealth supervision permanent? And this is this is uh, the the time that we're asking for uh, agenda items um, for future agendas. So is is this something that you'd like to put on a future agenda? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was just more to see if it was already covered in here. Um, but if it wasn't, I suppose we could yeah add it add it to the agenda. And we'll actually be discussing that topic today under item. I believe it's item six. Oh, okay. We haven't even gotten there yet. Okay. Sorry. Or item yeah. seven. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. And I see no other requests for public comment. Shall I close that field? 
Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, we are going to uh, be moving past our consent calendar because I don't believe that we do have a copy of the of, of the minutes. Um, so we're going to move on to um, uh, agenda item uh, number four, which is an overview of the committee's roles and tasks. So Roseanne, um, it's all yours. Yeah, and this is where I've just compiled a little bit of summary of what we've talked about in past meetings, um, what's been decided on so far and where we're going. Um, so it's got the a list of the topics that we've either discussed or to be discussed. Um, we've got some some um, telehealth regulations that we've that the committee has decided to move forward with so far. And then I also included for reference today under this item, the survey results that we had conducted and discussed at the last meeting. Um, so that in case anybody wants to reference them during this meeting, um, we have as part of the discussion, we have those survey results available as part of our materials today. Um, so that's all I have for this item. And I guess we can open it up to, to board member comment. Thank you, Roseanne. That was a lot of a lot of hard work. It, uh, it was very it was great to to see those yesterday, or um, to see all the results on the on on the work that you did. Thank you. Any any board comments? No comments. Thanks, Chris. Okay. All right. So now we will move on to item number five which is um, discussion of the potential uh, telehealth coursework requirement. So Roseanne, I all yours think, again. I think we have to, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Sabina, I think we have to take public comment um, because it was an agenda item, the overview. Oh, this is Sabina. Um, he was gonna go ahead and um, skip that because anything that you are discussing is captured in the rest of the agenda items and it was just an overview. And so, Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. That's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, right. then I can move on to the um, the next item, the telehealth coursework requirement review of draft language. So um, the telehealth committee at a past meeting to discuss interest in the possibility of requiring training or coursework regarding delivery of mental health services to clients via telehealth to ensure that its licensees are competent in its delivery. Um, and so you will see in attachment a that there is ha we have drafted some language um, that would require it's it's structured much like the uh, suicide assessment coursework. Um, it would require 6 hours of training or coursework in the provision of mental health um, services. Um, either upon a licensee's 1st, renewal or upon applicant application for licensure. It's drafted as a 1 time requirement. Um, so that's that would be for licensees um, in terms of capturing supervisors in terms of their their um, competence about supervision via video conferencing. Um, that would have to be drafted separately through regulations if the committee would desire to do that. However, I will point out um, our supervision regulations were just approved and we're, we'll be going into effect on January 1st, 2022. So in a few months. And supervisors, as part of that regulatory requirement, all new supervisors are going to have to complete a one time 15 hour training um, if they're a new supervisor. And one of the things that's 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 mentioned in that one time training is um, certain contextual variables such as treatment modalities, work settings, and the use of technology. So that is mentioned in the required training. So the committee want, might want to discuss if it feels that that's already covered. Um, in terms of the language, there's, there's quite a few aspects that, that should be considered if it's appropriate. Um, at this point, um, the committee might want to discuss, you know, is this really something, you know, what, what is the urgency of, of this? Is there, is there, we want to spend some more time really hammering it out or do we want to move forward with legislation right away? We're kind of getting to the point where, um, you know, legislation that would need to be, would be run this coming year would, probably need to go to the board in November. We might be able to squeak it out at a February or March board meeting, but um, it's definitely important, I think, to discuss, you know, the thoroughness and, and time we want to spend on really looking and discussing these issues. If it's something we feel like it's close to ready to go, might be okay to go with it. If it's something that needs more discussion, might be a little bit better to wait. Um, so 
I did, I did pose um, several questions that, um, that, that probably should be considered in light of this language. Um, so I will up, open it up to everybody to get their thoughts. Um, are there comments from uh, board members? So I want to thank Roseanne, you know, the, um, so actually I jumped. Can I speak? <laughs> of course, please. My autopilot just jumped right in. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Okay. So Christina Wong, LCSW member. So, um, I really like what Roseanne, you know, your proposed language and, you know, and I also want to thank you for the very, very thorough, um, you know, questions about the areas that need to consider. And so, um, you know, I, you know, when I was reading the, uh, you know, material, you know, I was a little surprised that actually I should not really be surprised, you know, about like the proportion, you know, the response, um, you know, from the survey about, uh, you know, just how about you know, about the schoolwork, you know, and how well they prepare uh, them to deal with uh, telehealth. And so it seems to me that, you know, it is a pretty, you know, urgent issue, you know, for, you know, for students to be more comfortable, you know, in terms of preparing, you know, themselves to deal with, you know, telehealth um, or, or, you know, providing mental health services uh, through telehealth. And so, you know, so I, you know, so that's, that's the first point. And then the second point about about the, um, you know, the, uh, the languages, you know, I really like that. And I think, you know, the, uh, the one time requirement, you know, and this, um, you know, this is actually, you know, pretty consistent, you know, with, um, you know, how we require, um, the, um, you know, the, um, you know, the associates, you know, to turn in, you know, some certification, you know, about their uh, CEU completion. And so I I like that, and I think you know if the board members or the public you know like this one you know I would really you know love to see that move forward as soon as possible. That's my two cents. Wow. Well. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Um, uh, I I agree. If I'll I'll jump in a little bit too. Um, I I think it's consistent with um, some of some of the other requirements that we have um, that we've had. In the past, specifically, you know, the the implementation of this uh, suicide assessment um, requirement of six hours. Um, so it, it, I think it tracks with um, the the trends of how uh, we are requiring um, additional uh, education in in these areas, and especially because this, although telehealth is is isn't new, I think with the explosion of you know COVID and and how everyone has had to move to it, it's it's going to be more of a um, not a requirement, but it's going to be more widely used than it has been in the past. So I think it would be a great thing to have people um, educated on it. So thank you, Susan. Did you have anything? I agree too because. I mean, the the fact that only 52% of the students said that their school provided coursework, and we know that this is the future. Um, it seems to me that there definitely needs to be a requirement. And I guess we, uh, I, I guess, Roseanne, you're working out all the wording for that right now. Right. If if we decided to move forward today, there would be some question. I would want to go down the the question list that I've provided and and make sure that we're okay on all those points. Is that is that something that we would do within the comment part? Yeah, right I would now? suggest maybe we hear from the attendees first, and then based on how the committee is feeling after that, and um, we can we can run down the list if that's what we want to do. Okay. So, uh, time for public comment. Moderator, would you open the, the Q&A panel for us, please? I certainly will. And we've opened up the Q&A feature of WebEx. We're sharing instructions on the screen. If you'd like to make a public comment on this agenda item, please click on the question mark icon, and then you can type the word comment into the text box and hit send. And I see we do have a couple of raised hands. Uh, one is a repeat from the Q&A feature. So I'll start with Leah Brew 
and I will send a request for you to unmute your microphone. Yeah, Brew. Uh, we can LPC, hear you. Uh, thank you, LPCC member and counselor educator. Um, I do think we want to move quickly on get le getting legislation in place. Um, however, I have some recommendations uh, for modifications to some of these suggestions in the list of questions. First of all, I think six hours is too many hours. Um, I've been going to a lot of continuing education or not, I guess conferences, and a lot of people are able to cover a pretty substantial amount of information in one hour. I honestly think three hours would be adequate, which would be um, if you're taking a a three unit class, a whole day, three hours, a whole lecture just on telehealth. I think that's sufficient. I think using six hours just because that's what we do with the other uh, types of issues is not really a good logic. Um, I do think three hours is adequate. Um, in terms of training, I'm a little concerned um, with the light. Let's say the bill gets signed in October and then it I don't know what you mean by going into effect by January of 2021. Of course, people wouldn't be able to have that requirement met, or maybe the 50% of programs wouldn't likely have that met. Um, so people would have to develop courses. We might need a little bit of grace, a little bit of time um, to push it to 2024, or at least July of 23, so that this coursework could be put together. Um, is there anything else I had? Um, yeah, I think that's it. And my biggest thing is that I think three hours is more than adequate. Thank you. And our next comment is a, let's see. Okay, is um, from someone identifying as Angela Gutierrez. Angela, I will send you a request to unmute your microphone and you may speak and you'll have two minutes. Uh, yes, ma'am. First, my name is Angelina, um, not Angela uh, Sorry. Uh, Gutierrez, and I'm a APCC. Um, and what I wanted to say is, it seems like once we graduate, whatever was not provided for us in a KCREP accredited program is on us. So I believe that a woman said earlier, this is the future, which I agree. So I'm wondering, when was the last time like KCREP requirements were updated? And I'm suggesting that maybe the institutions start implementing a telehealth course if it really is that important. If everybody else is gonna do it, um, or if we all have to do it, you know, post-graduation, I don't see why it can't be part of our coursework since only it's only existing in half the um, programs anyway. I know I did not have that here in California. Um, I'm in Oakland, by the way. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm asking that it be added to coursework too, as well, if not just a requirement. And I also agree with the previous speaker saying that six hours is too long. Um, it's like we can, you can cover all of that in three hours or less. And also, uh, not going to lie to you, it's not easy to sit on Zoom for that long, um, especially about such a heavy topic, right? It's an important but very heavy topic like, like uh, the suicide. Oh, that was a long one, I will tell you. Um, and then that's it, thank you. And our next comment is from someone identifying as Benjamin Caldwell. I will send you a request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes. Good morning, yes, thank you. Benjamin Caldwell, MFT, um, largely seconding what uh, Leah Brew had said. Um, three hours seems more than adequate here. Um, my only question would be about the the timing of this in the sense of when somebody is proving that they've had the training. Um, it seems a bit counterintuitive to have this be at the uh, licensure stage that somebody has to establish having had the training when just considering where we are in, in practice today, um, folks will have been already doing telehealth for several years before that. And you know, this may be partly a, a kind of process question about what can be done through statute versus regulation, but it would seem to make more sense to me to uh, put this alongside the other telehealth requirements that uh, the BBS passed in regulation that took effect what, about 2017 or so. Um, you know, the things like you have to 
identify crisis resources local to the client, et, et cetera. Um, those kinds of requirements seem like a better location for it to say that if you're going to do this kind of work, you need to have training beforehand. Thank you. Thank you. And our next commenter is Rebecca Gonzalez. Rebecca, I am sending you a request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes. Rebecca Gonzalez, National Association of Social Workers, California chapter. Um, I just want to um, agree with uh, Jennifer Alley's um, initial comments just about um, rushing some of these changes through, just concern that we haven't had enough time to discuss these issues. Um, also definitely agree in, you know, thinking about some kind of delayed implementation. Um, that would be part of my concerns as far as rushing this through. Appreciate the comments of uh, Leah Brew and Benjamin about it, the course being too long. Um, it's good to hear from their expertise on this issue. Thank you. And our next commenter is Jennifer Alley. Jennifer, I will send you a request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes to speak. Um, good morning again, Jennifer Alley with CAMP. Um, and per our letter, um, you know, we just don't think that this should be rushed and we're opposed to making any changes being made today in telehealth. Um, we want to discuss, you know, obviously the length of the training, you know, when it's required and how much, um, you know, if, if trainees and associates are going to be utilizing telehealth, then, you know, we think there should be a conversation about it being included in their degree requirements. I mean, the training should occur prior to the service being delivered in that modality. And so I think, you know, we really need to have a thoughtful discussion about when it is, when the telehealth training is is appropriate, um, you know, outside of the pandemic, um, you know, we would think that everybody would be trained before they did something with a, a consumer for the first time. Thank you. And our next request from comment is from uh, Jordan B Baylor. Jordan, I will send you a request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes to speak. Hello, uh, Jordan Bowler. 33 year old. Um, I, I uh, wanted to, to make clear that uh, the next coming generations of graduates are the most advanced in terms of using technology that will ever be. And I think provide making them do training is kind of like making therapists do training for how to have a conversation in a room. Um, I, I don't really think it's relevant. I think it's nice to offer if people need it as support, but I think just including the the what to do and the regulations and what you need to offer is totally fine, of course, because there's no real difference uh, in, in providing services with the exception of things you have to be aware of outside. Um, the other thing I would uh, request if possible is if um, you could release some kind of statement. So on the ground, um, the, the continual waiver process has been causing chaos. So if there's a way you could release some kind of statement of intent that you're going to, we're making the regulations so that people can know that they're not going to lose their supervisors, um, things like that, I, I think you'd save people a, a, a lot of unnecessary heartache. Um, so I just wanted to make that that known. I think that would be very important. Thank you. And I see no further requests for public comment. Shall I close the Q&A feature? Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. So Chris, I, I have fun. Can I, I raise my hand? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, it, I, I really appreciate, you know, everybody's comments, you know, about like, you know, just uh, have a thoughtful process, you know, and also pointed out the fact that, you know, that there is a lot to do also with, you know, the, um, you know, the accreditation standards and the school offers the classes. And so I, I, you know, and then also, you know, the hours, you know, six hours versus three hours, you know, I think these are all, all really, really good stuff. 
And so, you know, so I'm actually, you know, thinking that, you know, I, I mean, my feedback is that, you know, so for one, you know, I think, you know, amongst, um, you know, LPCC, you know, the counseling, um, the, uh, you know, the MFT degrees and the social work degrees, sometimes, you know, ha having some classes, I don't know how fast, you know, that actually, you know, that they can be added, you know, and in the meantime, you know, I think what we're, you know, definitely facing, you know, is that, you know, that, um, you know, from the survey results, you know, it's very, you know, loud and clear, you know, that, uh, you know, it's, you know, the, the, you know, it's below 50%, you know, said that right now, the class, you know, the school um, offer the classes, so I think the need is there. And if the trend that the train's already going, you know, and everybody, you know, or 50% at least, you know, the associate feels like that they're not really prepared. You know, I think this is a, you know, in, in terms of, you know, how urgent it is, I think it's right there. You know, so, you know, so are we, you know, if when we're thinking about, you know, how soon that, you know, we should, you know, introduce the legislation, you know, this is, Okay, so for us, you know, you know, I think it's it's a very important thing that, you know, that to make a piece of legislation, you know, it really takes time. You know, even though we try to, you know, get the um legislation introduced, it won't probably get in effect until 2023. And so we have about a year of the gap, you know, already, you know, see seeing that is, you know, gonna be the future. And so I I I agree that um, you know, I think six hours, three hours, it's probably, you know, to me, you know, as far as they are able, you know, as as far as the school can provide, you know, some sort of like um, you know, you know, elective classes, you know, be able to, you know, to have some, you know, uh training. I think this is all good because one of, you know, in terms of also the requirement. You know, once they can have the documentation, you know, that they have taken the classes, then, you know, the, the pathways that they don't necessarily have to spend, you know, another three hours sitting in front of the video conferencing, like uh, Angelina said, right? And so, you know, so I think this is actually a very reasonable way, you know, for us to just ensure, you know, that the um, associates, you know, are trained and, um, you know, and also just making sure that, you know, amount all the licenses that they are all covered. So I think that's, you know, it's about like the equality issue and also about the urgency issue and, uh, you know, also giving time, you know, for the, um, um, the schools, you know, to catch up and to design the classes. So that's my, my um, two cents. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, uh, Christina. Um, Susan, did you have any, any comments? I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to unmute. Not at this moment, I think we should move on. Right. Um, I also agree um, with uh, Christina that we do need to do something. Um, and I think that, you know, I guess my question would be, you know, the process with which, you know, we should move forward with, you know, with this, um, whether it's six hours or three hours, um, you know, so, so I, I guess would the, the next step then would be to address the questions that Roseanne has in, in, in here and look and see about moving forward. Is that about right? Okay. <clears throat> so we've heard, um, so, so then Roseanne, I guess I want to give it back to you to, to kind of go over the questions Is that, would that be the, the, the correct protocol? Yeah. yeah, let's go through them one by one then. Um, the first question would be, is six hours an appropriate amount of training or coursework? Are we going to go ahead, Susan? Are, are we going to discuss these as as Roseanne reads them, or is she just going to read the whole list? I think we should discuss them one at a time for a clarity, so we don't get. I mean, we can stay on each topic. Okay. okay. Well, personally, uh, you know, uh, I agree that three hours seems adequate if. If what we're talking about is the actual technology involved and not all the other things that are involved, because all the other things could take time and and I mean, the ethics, the law, the needs of the client um, experience in the past with this with a particular client, all those kinds of things could take longer. 
But as far as the actual use of technology, three hours is absolutely adequate. In fact, they could probably do it in even less time than that, but I think three hours would be totally fair. Um, yeah, if we're hearing from, um, you know, our stakeholders that, that three hours seems adequate, you know, it, again, it, it feels like I'll, I'll you know, <laughs> use, use the term that we've heard before. It could be an arbitrary number. I mean, we don't have any real data to back up what would, what would make, make it or break it. Um, but if the, if the thought is three hours would be a, would be adequate, then, um, you know, I, I, I don't see why. Why not either? Either. Yeah, I think six hours. You know, it's it's not really you know a deal breaker. You know, I think you know I'm, I'm just looking at you know what is you know the covered, uh, you know the areas that's in on a survey, that you know that's being mentioned. So the legal ethics issues, and what else? Um, you know, related. You know, the legal ethics issues. And relating to, to telehealth and then the, you know, how to assess clients respect here. And so I think those are actually, you know, 3 hours, you know, might be okay. So I think that's. I think we have a consensus 3 hours. Okay, okay. do we want to um, take public comment after each 1, or do we want to move on and then do it at the end? Can, can I make make a suggestion? Um, go through each one with the board members and then formulate a possible, a possible, um, I'm sorry, a possible proposal or a possible, um, put up something and then have the discussion so that we have the board members kind of come to a conclusion on some of these. Would that be okay? Yeah, that's Chris. fine with me. That's great. Okay. okay. Um, then I'll move on um, to the next question about timing. So is the timing of when the the proposal requires the training or, or coursework appropriate? It's an application for a licensure for new applicants and at renewal for current licensees. Um, so or should existing licensees be required to take the public? So the reason that this is this is drafted as in a in model of the suicide assessment work. Um, yes, as people have pointed out, it doesn't require it as part of the degree program. Um, a lot of the degree problem programs would probably choose to incorporate the coursework, um, and that would count because it is a one time requirement and then the applicants could. It, it tries to capture uh, in a clean way, um, you know, everybody in all different processes of licensure. So. Yes, it doesn't require that students get get it while they're in school. I think that it leaves some discretion to the school. If they, if they choose not to do that, then the person it assures that the person still has to do that before they get licensed. So that is one way to do it. There are, of course, other ways to do it um, that could be considered. For sure, um, this is just the way that that we chose to, to draft this one because the the suicide assessment course um, implementation was fairly smooth and, and not confusing. There's not a lot of, well, if this, then this, it's just like, before you get licensed, you've got to do this. Um, so, but it's definitely open to other suggestions and yeah, we could do it a number of other different ways. I actually think it's a, it's a really good model, Roseanne. Um, I think it's working well with the suicide um, assessment piece. And I think it addresses um, the comments that we had about rushing the universities to create curriculum because they don't have to do that. You know, if, they, if they're not, if they don't have the course available, then it can happen during the first renewal cycle. If they do have the course available, then it, it allows the, the students to take that course and not have to worry about it, um, you know, once they're licensed. So I, I, I think it's actually a very smooth and efficient uh, process. I'm, I'm for it. Any other comments? So, so Roseanne, you know, right now the, um, you know, the language is written that, you know, they can submit, you know, that uh, certification, you know, for the completion of the course, you know, either they are, you know, you know, during the time they either they submit, you know, for the application for examination, or they can do it afterwards, right? You know, so it's very broad. It doesn't really define, you know, when they have to do it or 
it captures two different groups. It captures the people that are in the license that are not licensed yet, and it also captures licensees because if you're a licensee, then you're going before you can renew, you have to sort of self certify that you've taken that coursework. If you're in anywhere in the pre licensure process, because we've got people at all different levels of pre licensure, we have people in school, people just graduated and applying for associate. So this just kind of with one swoop captures them all when they apply for licensure. Um, yes. And so, yeah, it does not ensure that by it's not a graduation requirement. It's not a quiet requirement for associate, but eventually everybody is, is going to is going to get captured on this. So there is you could argue that, well, really, if you're going to register as an associate, you should do this. Um, that is true, but. Um, this just ensures that they get captured before they're before they're licensed. Um, so if they're if they're registered as associate, I guess you could make an argument they're under supervision. Um, their supervisor should make be making sure that they're competent. You could argue the other way that maybe they should have an associate registration. It's just this is a this is a fairly clean way to implement it, but there are definitely a, there are other ways. Yes. Yeah. I li actually like this because, you know, I think this is pretty clean, you know, and I, and like Chris say, you know, the suicide prevention bill, you know, that has, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it hasn't really been having too much hiccup, you know, in um, the staff point of view. Yeah, I see Steve shaking his head. And so, you know, so I think if we require, you know, everybody, you know, to do this, you know, this will be, you know, a good, um, you know, good model. So I, I like that. Okay. Um, I just want this is kind of more of a of a footnote. I wanted to remind everybody that this proposal, unlike the suicide assessment um, that we're using as a model, does not allow applied experience to count. I did not feel that applied experience in telehealth. Everybody's pretty much done telehealth at this point because of the pandemic. I think so. I I cut out the applied experience. So I just wanted to to note that and make sure that there were no objections. I don't object to it at all. I don't object. I think, you know, the only thing is like, you know, if they can, you know, you know, I think the applied experience is very important, but not to, you know, also uh, confused with the fact that sometimes, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, that organization might have trainers, particularly provide training, you know, and I think that would be something, you know, different, but I think I'm just adding more to the soup so i'm okay <laughs> make it clean that's fine <laughs> okay um the, the next question would be is delayed implementation needed um the way that this is written um schools could or could not they they could choose to add it to their coursework they could not choose to add it to their coursework that's required um it, it would go into effect so if this were to run it as a bill in starting in january it would likely go into effect it would be it would the governor usually has to sign bills by late September or early October depending on the calendar year um, and so there would be about a three month period of advance notice before it became effective um, so the question is is that enough time for people to ensure that that um, that they're ready to meet the requirement or is there a delayed implementation needed So I want to make sure that I understand this correctly. Um, the the requirement that we're talking about. Like, all right, let me back up. I think that I think my initial reaction is is no, we don't need the delay because if the proposal is that they can you they can do the CEUs you know, within their first renewal cycle. So it's not putting the pressure on universities to create the curriculum unless they're ready to do so, because we're not making the, we're not, we're not proposing to university that they need to do anything. They can choose to, if they like to, um, uh, then I don't see why the delay would be necessary um, because it would, it, it doesn't force anybody to, to make, to make drastic changes to their, to their already developed curriculum. Is that, am I understanding that correctly, Roseanne? Okay, then no, I don't think so. I don't think we need to delay it. In the I comments? It, 
Yeah, Christina here. So um, I agree with with Chris. I think I mentioned briefly, you know, in my, um, you know, the very first comment, you know, because, you know, taking, you know, getting the implementation of the legislation, you know, will take time. And so, you know, the soonest is going to be, you know, um, the soonest is going to be, you know, the, the January 1st, 2023. And so there's already, you know, a year gap, you know, so, you know, so. I don't know if this will work better, say, like, you know, we implement in, say, like, after the graduation, you know, say, like, implement it, say, like, you know, July 1st. You know, I don't know if it makes a difference, you know, to let the school, you know, and the new graduate know that, you know, this is coming in effect, you know, so it's not like right in the middle of the, the semester. I, you know, so I, I, you know, it just came in my mind, you know, that that possibly could be one option, but, um, but I think, you know, if implementing in 2023, you know, would be, would be ideal. So that's my, that's my thought. It's a good thought, Christian. I didn't think about the, um, about that piece of it either. So, you know, that, that might be a good consideration about the July, um, you know, start date. I would I would weigh in with just just so you know what we did with the suicide assessment coursework. It's a six hours, so a little bit more. Um, that one had a year long delayed implementation, so I don't think it's un, even though I know that that there, we really you know want to make sure that people have this training as soon as possible. I think a lot of people would probably get it in in anticipation anyways. So I don't I don't think it's a bad thing to make a July effective date. Just so that people aren't scrambling once they find out, um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of time to ease into it, and get word out. So, that's my two my two cents. <laughs> Thank you, um, Susan. Go ahead. Um, I think that I agree because unless we start notifying people now, there's going to be legislation, and you're going to have three months in which after the legislation is signed to get this done, three months goes by quickly. So, I mean, just to cover all our bases and to make it appropriate for everyone, I, I agree doing it by July might be more appropriate and, and would cover everyone and nobody would have any excuses. Oh, I, I didn't have enough time because that is enough time. Thank you. All right. So um, I think the proposal on the table right now would be to um, have the July 1, 2023 effective date then. So a six month delayed implementation. Okay, moving on. Um, does the training or coursework description used in the proposal, which is that they have um, coursework in the provision of mental health services via telehealth, does that act accurately capture what the board is trying to achieve? Um, should more specific topics be called out? Now, I will note with this, that is a good, uh, a lot of people in this survey said that they wanted you know, law and ethics for telehealth, um, being prepared for emergencies or handling emergencies, things like that. Um, you know, the, it, it kind of, with CE courses, sometimes being a little bit more vague is better because it can allow some discretion onto the topics that are covered. Um, Topics that are really specific that are prescribed um, have a tendency to get outdated over time. Um, at the same time, you know, the, the committee has to weigh how much, how much do you think you want to leave to the discretion of the providers to do a good job in picking the course topics and um, how much do you want to prescribe that actually be covered? I have a feeling that, um, you know, the, um, you know, it's more up to, you know, the, uh, the CE provider, you know, because, you know, we can, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I wonder, you know, that, you know, we don't have to make them. This is the, you know, list of the topic you must <laughs> cover. I think this is, you know, I, I don't think that is always, you know, the nature of the legislation make it so specific. And so I think the provision 
um, of mental health services via telehealth is actually, you know, broad enough, you know, and I'm sure that, you know, the three hours, you know, three hours is really not that much. It's almost to me like a little, you know, like a refresh class, making sure that, you know, people have their basic knowledge. And so if people wants to do, you know, more focus on the risk assessment via telehealth, very, very wonderful, or they want to, you know, know how to do more, you know, about learn more about like confidentiality, you know, it's, um, you know, there's just a lot of things that, you know, I think, you know, based on the individual's need, you know, that they can, they can do it, you know, they can choose what they, what they want. So, um, you know, so to me, it's like the broader, it's just the better. So you got your hand up? I'm sorry. Had your hand up? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, in a way, I agree with Christina, but um, I do think that we should be very specific that the course should include ethics and legal questions because those are kind of basic, basic, basic to the whole use of technology. And I think everybody would, I mean, it doesn't, that won't take that much time, but I think that we need to say that specifically. Do you think that maybe, um, um, you know, telehealth would start to become included in, in the law and ethics that everybody has to take every renewal period? I mean, I, not that we would require that to, to happen, but I think that that would probably be, um, you know, a better place for it because I don't know that you need to do three hours of, uh, of or six hours of, of telehealth law and ethics, I think including it within, um, you know, within the current law and ethics might be a better place for that. Um, and, but and I also agree about um, leaving it broad because I think that, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So as new trends and, um, you know, delivery models come, come up as we're, as we're learning about telehealth, I think, you know, being able to uh, create coursework around that for providers, I think giving them that opportunity um, is is really essential because this is an evolving um, modality. So I think that leaving it broad is 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 great. Okay. All right. Yeah. So for now, um, obviously we're going to open this up to public discussion again. But for now, just leave it as as what it currently says. And then finally, um, I just wanted to point out again, so that we're abundantly clear this, this language is written for licensees and, um, pre licensees. It's not written to capture training for supervision via video conference. Um, that's a separate thing. Um, the supervision regulations already prescribe that. Um, so that would require a regulation change. Um, if the committee wishes to address that this, we could. Um, I will, as I noted earlier, um, we just found out that our supervision regulations got approved. Um, that does um, require the one time 15 hour course for new supervisors um, to talk about the use of technology. So I don't know if, if there's if the committee might decide that more is needed um, or the committee might decide that um, that is sufficient at this time. I personally think that this is fine for now because, you know, the, those who are so, you, you know, so existing legislation cover, you know, the, uh, um, you know, the associates and then cover the existing licensees. And then for those who need to supervise and there, the possibility is that they have to, you know, have the 15 hours of the um, supervision training, you know, from, from the very beginning. And then, you know, every two years, they will have to, you know, take that six hours class. And I'm sure that will also give the provider, you know, some very good time, you know, to develop, you know, some telehealth specific supervision classes and, um, you know, and. I think this is a, a wonderful thing, you know, and there is an, an avenue for those who need to do, you know, more about telehealth, you know, that they can be more, um, you know, more up to date. Christina, I will add to that. Um, the six hours is going from just a course. They can do collaboration 
sort of yes. sorts of activities and says so just oh, want yes. to make sure that that yeah yes oh yes i've been taking that six hours class every renewal period yep <laughs> yes <laughs> not in lieu of the practical experience so yes i also agree i think that that letting the, the supervisor you know leaving it out of um of this piece of it is is fine um i think that the supervision part um will take care of itself i think that that that, that that's the better place for it um you know much like the thought with the law and ethics piece so i want to say one more thing it may or may not be relevant but you know some information to also consider you know, I think, you know, right now, you know, it, it, it's amazing that, you know, Rebecca, you probably, you know, would echo with me, you know, Jenny Wong, you know, the previous NASW director, executive director, you know, he's always opposed, you know, doing, you know, CEUs, you know, as, as it goes, you know, now this wave is, you know, for telehealth and now the previous wave is, you know, to, about cultural competency, you know, and so I think, you know, he always, you know, you know, you know, encourage everybody to be very thoughtful, you know, in, um, you know, you know, in, in adding, you know, the, um, um, classes, you know, so that it's not burdening, you know, the, uh, the, the registrants and the licensees and supervisor, you know, I think, you know, down the road, you know, also very important that, you know, I think, you know, we, it is about time, you know, that, you know, that the board, you know, is going to have that overview. You know, of the really the, the CE, CE requirement, I think, you know, in the past, you know, how many years now, some of those requirements is kind of like, you know, why do we need this here now? And so I think it's, it's a really good timing, you know, to put the legislation and the language in, you know, so that we can also down the road, you know, when it comes to, you know, in 1 of these committees or whatnot, you know, to have an overview of the, uh, the, 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 uh, CE requirements, you know, that we could have some good choices, you know, down the road, you know, what really is necessary. You know, so, you know, so I just want to put, put this information out there so that, you know, we, you know, so that stakeholders, you know, know that, you know, this is, um. You know, this is going to probably, you know, be reviewed, you know, fairly soon, you know, and just to see, you know, how the overall relevancy, you know, and the requirements of the, um, you know, of the CEs and so that, you know, we are continuing, you know, we will be able to keep, you know, the um, um, licensees and the associate up to date, you know, of what the current trend and, and stuff. So, um, just want to put it out there. So, not, not mean to speak for you, Steve, but. <laughs> I fully agree. <laughs> it's on yeah. our staff planning. Yes. Okay. Um, so at this point, I think we're going to open it up to public comment. Correct. Yep. So, moderator, thank you. And this is the moderator at the direction of the chair. I've opened the Q and A feature of WebEx. If you'd like to make a public comment on this agenda item, the potential telehealth coursework requirement, please click on the question mark icon, or if you're on a mobile device, click on the three dot other options icon to find the Q and A button. Type the word comment into the text box and hit send. Each commenter will have a 2 minute time limit and we will take comments in the order received. We've had a hand raise from a. Participant or uh, attendee name going by the name of Leah Brew. Leah, I'm going to send your request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes. Hi, Leah Brew, counselor educator. Um, thank you for considering the three minutes, uh, three minutes, three hours. And uh, I wanted to just clarify that what those three hours would cover are law and ethics. Um, and this kind of addresses number five as well. I actually think that um, this is about public protection, which is the, the BBS's purview. And if there are clinical advantages, that's great, that's fun, uh, but that's not what this course should cover. I honestly think I would change the language to say um, to address legal and ethical issues. In terms of technology, just so um, board member Susan knows, um, the HIPAA compliance and all that is part of a legal and ethical course anyway. It's always been there or it should be there. 
Um, so it's not about technology, it's about the risks associated with using technology with clients. So I would like to put language that says um, addressing legal and ethical issues. I also believe that universities should be required and using a July implementation date, July 2023 would be really helpful um, because the reality is everybody is going to be using this technology or almost everybody is. So people should be prepared and aware. Um, and then my hope is that the, um, the registrants and um, yeah, we'll just say trainees and reg well, registrants and licensees would just have to show proof that they have completed um, three hours in telehealth, what, whether they got it in their program, because half the programs like mine already had it in there, or whether they did it through a CEU. And the delay for July also is helpful to create the CEU course. 15 seconds. Um, because that's what takes a long time. Implementing in a university, one, one lecture doesn't take that long. So if you give them a semester to do it, they can get it done. Thank you. And our next commenter is going by the name Karen Wall. Karen, I will send you a request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes to speak. One moment. Uh, Karen, I see you are connected twice, so I'm going to pick one and unmute you. And go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, um, whoops. I don't want to be. We can hear you. Okay. So, hi. My name is uh, Karen Wall, and I am a um, LMFT, private practice, and my private practice is telehealth. And I put, I, I did put several comments in the chat box about um, an organization and some the stuff that's already out there as far as you know we're talking about curriculum development and CEUs and all um, I would encourage you to if you haven't already become familiar with this this site on um, the telebehavioral health institute um, the website is telehealth.org but um, that is an excellent site that not only has kept up to date with legal, ethical, and training and, and competencies, and I know this because I was um, one of the authors of the article on competencies in telehealth, but um, it's also got uh, a multitude of CEUs. Um, a clinician can actually become certified as a telehealth provider, telebehavioral health. Um, so I, want to, I wanted to recommend um, that resource and so i i put three chats um in there about that and about the competencies things like that um i'm on the faculty at wiser university and one way we get the training to our students is by seminars and there's the offered ceus for them so and our seminars they, they, will, they can okay they can get the three hours so uh, I just wanted to offer that and let you know that it's in the chat for you to look at. Thank you. Just as a note to participants, we do not have the chat feature on. So these references, oh. unfortunately, have not reached the participants. Uh, we have a comment request for comment from Rebecca Gonzalez. Rebecca, I will send you a request to unmute your microphone. And then you will have two minutes to speak. Uh, this is Rebecca Gonzalez with the National Association of Social Workers, California chapter. I wanna thank you for the questions you outlined, Roseanne, and the discussion that's happened so far. And to follow up on what you said, Christina, I will go ahead and once again, echo Jan Lee Wong in that when we're talking about continuing education units that we believe um, the professional practitioner should be um, trusted to take the CE courses that they believe they need in order to ethically practice. Um, we have traditionally and still um, 
uh, lean towards having the training in school. And I think uh, Ben referenced that this, um, having it done before you're really out there, um, you do wanna have that training early. Um, and then also talking about the hours from six to three, um, I checked with some of our um, experts on that issue and they also agree, agreed that three hours was um, adequate and um, better than six. Thank you. And our next commenter is identified as Jennifer Alley. Jennifer, I will send your request to unmute your mic and you will have two minutes to speak. Um, hello again, this is Jennifer Alley with CAMP. Um, you know, I'm gonna align my, my comments with, with Ms. Gonzalez that just spoke, you know, I, I and Leah somewhat. I, I really think that um, the, you know, education and training should be part of the de degree requirement rather than a new CE. Um, you know, we want everybody to learn that early um, and as early as possible in their careers, um, especially before they're they're treating um, any consumers. I think it's the best way to ins help ensure that um, consumer protection is there. But again, we are still a little bit concerned about the speed at, we at which we're making um, changes to telehealth. And we're talking about the the training, and um, but I, you know, so I just kind of want to make that as my benchmark comment consistently through. But if you're going to push something through, then it should be a degree requirement and not a CE. Okay, thank you. And our next commenter is identifying as Kathy Atkins. Kathy, I will send you a request to unmute your microphone and you will have two minutes to speak. And Kathy, have you, oh, there you are. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, I had a technical issues. My name is Kathy Atkins and I'm the deputy executive director of camp and I just wanted to add on to what Jen and Rebecca and I believe uh, Leah said and. Um, I believe someone said this earlier and I apologize if I'm um, reiterating, but. You know, similar to, I think it's the suicide right that has the. CE. Education or. Um, or hours of experience, I think, you know, to highlight what Jen said, you really don't want to be sending people out without experience when it, you know, it could take someone 6 to 8 years to get to that licensure. Um, but you also have people in the pipeline and who are licensed. So I think that's a good way to kind of grab everyone. I think that that has been made again. I, I I'm having technical issues, so I apologize. Apologize if I'm. Um, saying what everyone else has said, but I, I would hope that you're able to, the BBS would um, grab all three groups with sort of how they did with the suicide, or at least take into consideration the various comments made and how to grab everyone. So thank you. And uh, the next commenter is Karen Wall. She says, it's not a comment, but since the information in the chat is not available, the Telebehavioral Health Institute tbhi at telehealth.org, the Coalition for Technology in Behavioral Science, ctibs at ctibs.org, and the Journal for Technology in Behavioral Science, jtibs, will be good resources for gaining coursework needed in any capacity. I see no further requests for public comment. Shall I close the feature? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, comments from board members? So I hear it loud and clear <laughs> that, uh, you know, the stakeholders, you know, really, you know, want to, you know, have a thoughtful process 
you know, so even though, you know, that's, um, you know, that I think there is certainly a need, you know, so, you know, I, I am okay, you know, either way, um, you know, also just thinking about, you know, what Leah said about the law and ethics. And so, you know, another point of reference is that, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we will have a new, you know, requirement, you know, also for the AS, you know, for the associates, you know, to be able to take the classes, you know, the law and ethics classes. And, you know, in, you know, so that, you know, for every renewal period, so that might be another avenue, you know, would be a really good way to also protect and make sure, you know, the, um, you know, that, um, you know, they understand the law and ethics in regarding of telehealth. So, um, so, you know, so I, I, <laughs> I respect, you know, the, the, you know, the stakeholders. And I think that is important that, you know, we also, you know, listen to them. And so, you know, if we want to have some sort of a conversation later, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, so that, you know, that, you know, the association and the, the schools can really take this opportunity, you know, to, you know, to be able to develop some classes, you know, to really ensure that, you know, they, um, you know, the, this, um, you know, the graduates, you know, are equipped, you know, with the knowledge, you know, with the, you know, for conducting telehealth, um, conducting uh, counseling, you know, or mental health services via telehealth. And I'm also, you know, hoping that, you know, the association, you know, now hearing that this is a need, you know, maybe even encouraging the CE providers, you know, to provide this kind of cl classes, you know, to let the, um, as, you know, to let the licensees be able to, you know, to have those selection. So that's I'm I'm okay either way to delay or not delay. So, Chris, back to you. Delay or not to delay? That is the question, right? I know, uh, right? <laughs> so Susan has a comment. I'm sorry. Susan has a comment. Oh, okay, Susan, go ahead. I the chat thing on, so I don't. I mean, the raise hand thing on. Um, I don't know where it is, but anyway, uh, I did mention at the beginning that I thought we should just add law and ethics and you you mentioned that you thought it came in the course for law, on law and ethics which i'm sure it will but i don't think there's a mistake to putting it here also because this is going to be front and center everyone who practices is going to take this course and these are questions that are going to be in their mind oh my golly what what am I doing? What are the ethics of this? What's the law? So I, I, I really want to see law and ethics included in that. So I think I think what I'm hearing then is that there's still room for some discussion regarding where we need to move forward with this. So are, are we looking at tabling this until um, a future meeting? Well, let Chris, if you don't mind, let me let me um, tell you where I, I think the language is right now. And then you guys, in, in light of that and the comments can decide whether or not you want to move forward. So right now, the, there is three changes that I'm hearing uh, that are desired to the, the language proposal. I'm hearing a, um, a delayed implementation date. Uh, instead of having a January 1, 2023, as it was in the language, we would change that to July 1, 2023. I'm hearing change the six hour course requirement to a three hour course requirement. And then I'm hearing that um, instead of the language saying that they have completed training or coursework in the provision of mental health services via telehealth, I'm hearing a desire for some language that says something like um, they have completed a minimum of three hours of training or coursework addressing legal and ethical issues in the provision of mental health services via telehealth. Um, so, Susan? Yeah, I, I would just say that, that providing coursework in the provision of mental health services via telehealth, including the law and ethics of this technology. Because the way you said it before, it sounded like it was going to be only law and ethics, which it's not. Okay. That's a good point. One that said um, three hours of training or coursework in the provision of mental health. In the provision of mental health services uh, via telehealth to include um, 
subjects of law and ethics in that technology, of that technology. So then I have a question, you know, if we just focus on, you know, the uh, law and ethics, you know, then because now if the law, you know, if the regulation change is implemented down the road that the associates, you know, will be required to take, you know, three hours of law and ethics, you know, for every renewal period because it's on the table. So will you count this also with the can they can they double count it? Right, and it it's also seems that you know it would be probably duplicate, you know, if we, you know, specifically asking them, you know, to just take this class, you know, focusing on the law and ethics, you know, for you know for um you know just for telehealth. Yeah, law and ethics is law and ethics. It's about the application, you know. So you know, so I think you know that's um you know, so I think that's. Probably, you know, and that's why to me is like, I would rather, you know, just make it broader. I think the provision of, you know, of mental health, you know, services is actually, you know, adequate, you know, broad enough that you can embrace pretty much anything. You know, right now we're talking about like maybe the technological issue down the road, you know, there might be something else we never know. So, you know, so I would rather, you know, be a lot broader. You know, so that's why I'm okay with just, you know, the, the original language. And this isn't a recurring three hours. This is a one-time. One time, yes. One yes. Time. Say one okay. time. yes. Okay. So then I, I, you know, maybe if we're, if we're somewhere in the middle, I think back to where Roseanne was, um, you know, to like, it should include law and ethics within it, but it doesn't have to focus, like it doesn't have to be the, um, you know, the primary focus of it. Is that, is that, do you think that that would meet um, kind of what the stakeholders are, are talking about, but also uh, address the flexibility of, of having, um, you know, other pieces in there? Are you asking me or are you asking? Yeah, I'm asking kind of the general, yeah, the general, you, you, Christina and, and, and Rosanna, both, sorry. Rosanna, you can answer. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm kind of torn. I mean, we could definitely throw it in there that it has to be law and ethics. I, I, I can see both Susan and Christina's point um, that, you know, both make, make good sides of an argument. It seems to me like sort of goes without saying that it would be, it would include law and ethics. Um, I really could honestly go either way with, I'm, I'm fine with keeping it broad. I'm fine with um, specifying that, that it needs to touch on, on law and ethics. I, I think that you could choose to do either. It's not specifying any amounts. You will get people possibly saying, well, my, my three hour CE course uh, as an associate that I'm required to take covered this. And the, the answer that, to that would be as staff, we would say, well, you know, if you can show that, that your coursework the, from the description, you know, covered an hour of that, then you can count that hour. I mean, I can see both, I can see both sides of it too. I, I think I'm leaning towards the broad um, only, only because I, you know, I, I don't know that we consumer protection is what we are tasked with. And so what is the best way to do that? I, you know, I, I think that it, that the law and ethics component is going to be very important. Um, but I also still would think that that in some way would get included, evolve into the recurring law and ethics classes that, that are, that are, that everyone's required to take regardless. Um, I, I just think it makes sense to, you know, that, that that would be an evolution. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know. Go ahead, go ahead, Susan. First, I don't think we should table this. I think we should decide today. Time is tight and we're almost in agreement and I, I really think we should make a decision now. 
Secondly, I think the way the wording is, which is coursework in the provision of mental health services via telehealth. To, in, to include, I mean, the word include means it's one of the many topics that will be there to include the law. And maybe we don't even want to say ethics, but a lot of people are going to have questions about, oh, what's the law, you know, and the law is going to change. So that's why I think we should put that word in there, including the law of this, concerning this technology laws concerning this technology. I think if you're going to add law and you should add ethics, I think that they kind of go hand in hand. You know, the, the what we have to do versus what we should do. <laughs> I I think that if, if we said mental, provision of mental health services via telehealth, including law and ethics related to telehealth, I, I think that that is reasonable. It does not um, it does not say that the whole course has to talk about that. It doesn't say that you have to spend an hour or half the time. I mean, it, it's it's leaving discretion. Um, you know, if if somebody comes up with a major pushback to that, um, when, when when the bill is running, that they have a hugely valid point that that's not a good idea, which I can't see why. You know, I think we could revisit making an amendment, but. Um, I don't think it hurts to say law and ethics. That was Susan is right that it was a big part of the survey that people felt that that was a big topic that should be covered. Um, but it, we're not saying that the, the whole course has to be that. So, I would suggest to to have it say provision of mental health services via telehealth, including law and ethics related to telehealth. Sounds good. I like that. Do we do we have enough to make a motion? So what I would recommend that the motion would be um, would be to make any make the discussed changes to the proposed language, which is the making it a three hour course, making it a delayed implementation until July 1, 2023, and um, making the amendment to inc include legal and ethical or law and ethics related to telehealth. And then also the motion will be to make any technical changes as well, and then bring to the policy and advocacy committee for discussion. This is Sabina, can I interrupt? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. This is um, agendized as a discussion only. Um, so I'm, I would suggest that Roseanne and staff absolutely have enough information to go back to the drawing board and, and, and bring up and draft up some wonderful language. Um, we can talk about here whether you want to see that language here back first or just at the policy and advocacy committee. But as of right now, it's just a discussion and they have plenty to go and work on um, without a motion. Well, we need to bring it to the PNA um, next in order for it to move forward. I think that the, the changes that are made are pretty easy changes to make in the language. So the next step, if the, if if we want to move this forward, the next step would be to take it to the PNA meeting. So, Sabina, do you are you saying that because of how it's being agenda agendized? Because you know there, you know, that's yeah. that's correct. It's only as a discussion, right? And so um, you, but the staff and everybody has enough information that they can go back to the drawing board and work up some really nice language and, and bring it back to the PNA, should you desire, yeah. or um, so, and then we can take a motion on it there. So it means that you know we don't need a motion because how this this item is being agendized, but you know, but the staff can actually you know put the language in the next PNA, you know, with or without you know that uh, the. You know the motion. You know from you know from uh, the telehealth committee, right? Yeah, I see correct, that. correct. So there's enough information the board can take this language, work on it, and fine tune it, and bring it back to the P and A committee for their full recommendation to the full board. Perfect. So this is good because you know I think you know that Roseanne can continue to work with the stakeholders and you know hear whatever other. 
uh, information that you know that um, you know Roseanne can just incorporate them, you know, and bring them back to the PNA next time. And then with that, um... Roseanne speaking, but I couldn't oh, hear you. Oh, sorry, with the suggestions on the table, I would I would bring it to the October fifth. Okay, so then we're ready to move on. All right. Um, okay. So item number six on the agenda is the discussion and possible recommendation um, of amendments to clarify telehealth laws uh, for associates and trainees. Can I have a quick request? Can we take sure. a break? Oh, of course, we can do that. Biological All right. break. I think everybody yes. would welcome that. All right. Uh, so, what do we need? What do we usually do? Five minutes, 10 minutes? When do you want us to be back? Uh, let's, let's do a 10 minute break. How's that? So, we'd or, be back here, what, 10 in, uh, Yeah, 1046. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> 